Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. Today we are participating in another collaboration. It is the What Would You Make um, for April. And with this one, it, you're working primarily with wood. The host is Connie's Wood Shop and DIYs. The guest host is Amy Creative creatively expressive and the other host is Brenda with Rustic and Lace DIY. So let's get to the first DIY. I'm going to take this sign that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to spruce it up a little bit. Most of my DIYs you know today are fairly simple ones. Um, unfortunately they require a lot of painting so I did, um, didn't make you watch me paint every little bit of it, um, because, well, we all know how to paint, right? So I took this and did white in the, you know, the facial area in certain spots in the, the ears and, and whatnot. Um, I just used the, the Waverly white uh, chalk paint and well let's see I thought I cut more of this out than I did I'm trying to get in there around the edges without slopping over the top onto the part that I want to paint black so despite the fact that it looks like I'm speedy Gonzalez here I've sped up the video I'm taking it really slow and being very careful um, but for you know y'all's sake i sped up the video so that we weren't watching slow-mo painting <laughs> and you can see here where i put all the white now i'm going to start with the black and i'm going to paint all the areas around um the face with the black um I had originally intended on I, painting those little, the little horn looking things. Um, I was going to use the Waverly antique wax for those and somehow I just kept on painting. But in the end it doesn't matter because I ended up covering them up. So here we have so far I've done the I painted the heifer please and the, the cow with the black. Now I'm taking those little um, laurels or whatever you call them and I'm using the Waverly Moss chalk paint and painting those in. I'll just let you watch for a minute. If you're new here, we appreciate you stopping by and would love it if you would like, subscribe, comment, and share. Um, when I hit a thousand likes, I'm going to do a giveaway. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. For all of you that are continuing subscribers, thank you so much for your support. We truly appreciate it. All right, so now here I'm using the lavender sachet. Um, I think it's apple barrel and I'm using that on the hearts and just painting those in um, purple is my favorite color so anytime that I have an opportunity to incorporate purple in a project I usually do um, I've been trying I've I have to make a very very conscious effort when I'm crafting not to do everything with purple because I know that the people that um, you know that would buy stuff out of my shop or out of um, our painted tree booth not everybody is a purple fan so I have to make a very conscious effort not to do purple in everything I do uh, so with this I'm using the solo wood flowers and one of the things I love about these you can buy them, you know, with 
already colored, which um, the purple and the pink that's on the cow's head were already colored. But you can also buy them in a natural color and paint them whatever color you want. Now there's several ways to do that. Um, one of the ways that it can be done is to take some warm water and paint and mix it really good and then dip the flower in there and let it soak. Um, or you can paint it like I did. With the chalk paint, I find it's better to paint it. I get a more vibrant color. And that's what I did. I did that one in moss to match the laurels at the, the bottom of the cow's head there. But I really love these solar wood flowers. They're, they're really pretty. They're easy to work with. Um, I think they just elevate a project so much more. Um, depending on what you're doing. But um, when my son and daughter-in-law got married, uh, we took a bunch of the, I ordered a bunch of the solar wood flowers and those were the flowers that were on their wedding cake. Um, I just colored them in, in their um, color scheme and that's, and that's what we put on their um, wedding cake. And you can see here, uh, like I said, I covered those horns up that I was worried about. It's okay. <laughs> so I decided that I wanted just a little bit of sparkle and shimmer in there. Um, I had this glittery purple nail polish sitting on the table next to me. So I just went and touched it up over the hearts to give it a little bit of a, a shimmer. You can't see it in the, the video. It doesn't, you know, doesn't really show, but it's um, very light shimmer. And for those of you that aren't a fan of glitter, but you want a little bit of shimmer, the nail polish is a good alternative because you don't have loose glitter that's going to fly off of everything. It's it's sealed in with the, the nail polish. So that's a bonus there to using nail polish if you want a little bit of a glittery shimmer to your project without the mess of glitter everywhere. So here I'm taking this little, um, well, this spool of burlap ribbon that came from Sam's Club. It's, um, it's burlap and it's got like a stri uh, stripe down the middle with black, that's black with white polka dots. And I thought that probably did the trick the best. Um, had I had cow print ribbon, I definitely would have used it, but I don't have any. Or at least if I do, I don't remember that I have any. My craft stash is out of control, y'all. I've been slowly working on trying to get it organized and then came into some free <laughs> craft supplies. Um, so that's just kind of upped my having to organize everything game. But anyway, <laughs> so I've got, um, I put the little bow, made a little bow there, um, stuck it up on the corner. And then I decided it was, I needed something in the middle of the bow. So true to my nature, went with a butterfly. Um, I think I got these from, I got the butterflies from Dollar Tree in one of their little, you've got, um, they've got those little wooden trays that have like several different I, little wooden icons in them. And that's what I used. I painted it. Um, I took a little bit of black down the middle and then I painted it with the lavender sachet and the nail polish so that it matched the hearts. And I just stuck it right in the middle of the bow there. It helps cover up the twine that's pinching the bow. And it added a nice little accent. So for those of you that have been watching for a little while, um, watching our, our videos for a little bit, then you already know that, you know, we like the farmhouse vibe, 
Um, me and Dee, Dee my business partner, we like the farmhouse vibe and everything, but I also like color and I also like a little bit of whimsical in, you know, in my projects sometimes. So while I do try to stick most, you know, mostly to the farmhouse vibe, um, there are times that I add whimsical touches or I just get a wild hair up my tail and I'll do a completely whimsical project with fairies, butterflies, you know, whatever, which doesn't fit what our target market is usually shopping for, but sometimes I have to make my heart happy at times. So, <clears throat> but I do try to add a little bit of the whimsical in when I'm doing a farmhouse project sometimes. So, I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers and I'm get, doing a giveaway. The video that you're seeing here, um, a friend of mine, um, her stepmother would, um, has been put in a, um, a facility and whatnot and she had a ton of craft supplies. They just want them gone. So they told me, come get them, they're free. All of that, everything in that building that I showed you in that video is up for grabs. So I'm grabbing everything I can um, or everything that I think I can use or, or, you know, of interest. So I'm going to pass that on to y'all. So when I reach a thousand subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm probably going to give away two or three things. Um, so please share the video out to anybody that you think um, that, that crafts that you think would be interested in our content. Um, and when I reach a thousand subscribers, we're doing a giveaway of some of those craft supplies. I was just in hog heaven with all of that. So now we're working on my set on the second project. Um, it's another one of those signs from Dollar Tree. Uh, they had like four different ones. I got one of each of the designs, so I'll probably be doing the other ones at some other point. Um, but this one's got the, the pig and the chicken on it and it says wakey wakey eggs and bakey. These make great kitchen decor, you know? Um, so I'm kind of keeping it in the sort of in the same thing theme as the other one as far as you know some of the colors and and whatnot so that you know when i get and, and i'll do the same with the other two so that when i get them complete if somebody wants to buy the whole set they match if they don't want to buy the whole set and they just want one that's fine too um i haven't decided yet if i'm going to post these online or if i'm going to put them in my painted tree booth. I'll probably put them online for now because my booth is, we've got like a little shelf unit at the moment. So it's kind of full. <clears throat> One thing about joining all these collaborations and whatnot is it gets me off my tuchus to create more product um, rather than just having a bunch of craft supplies laying around, which my husband is convinced that, you know, the buying of the craft supplies is a whole different hobby than the actual crafting with them. Uh, so now I'm, I'm working on trying to work my stash and prove him wrong. <laughs> I've got a huge stash, so it's going to take me a while to work through it. But first I have to get it organized and getting all those other supplies has, um, really put a kink in that um, as far as trying to get it all organized but I'll get it done it, it will get done eventually I work a little bit at it you know work at it a little bit at a time right now we've got a shed that you know all our craft supplies are in bins and in that huge shed well not all of them the ones I just got are not um, in bins but that shed is packed from front to back, top to bottom. And some of the stuff is just willy nilly in different bins. I've got mixed 
stuff. You know, I've got fall, Christmas, Halloween mixed in, you know, in one bin. So my goal is to get everything properly entered into our inventory and get it organized in bins by, you know, season, holiday, that kind of thing. So that when it comes time to craft for a certain season, I'm not hunting through five, six different bins, um, you know, for what I need. So here I had used, um, I think it was the Waverly hazelnut um, on the chicken. And I wanted to add a little bit of dimension to it, you know, because chickens aren't just one color. They've got varied colors in there. So I used a little bit of the barn red with this fan brush um, and just brushed it in there while the hazelnut was still wet got a little heavy handed in a couple spots, so I had to go back and kind of blend it a little bit. I'm not absolutely certain I'm totally happy with it. I may go back and fiddle with it a little bit more, but for now it'll do. Um, so I just took and, and kind of blended it a little bit more. Just trying to add a little bit of dimension where it didn't look just, you know, one color, because chickens aren't one color chickens. I have my neighbor's chickens and roosters. Um, <clears throat> we're out in the country, so he just lets his chickens and roosters run. So they're in my yard all the time. He's got some really beautiful um, chickens and roosters. Uh, so I get to enjoy them every now and then um, when they're over here digging for food. <laughs> So I took um, that same moss from Waverly and painted these. <clears throat> painted these laurels here with the same color. And uh, think, let's see. Oh, and I think I add I added some once I got done painting these, I added some actual greenery in there to just kind of give it more of a three-dimensional look. You'll see that here in a minute. I thought I cut this out or I didn't make you watch me paint both sides of it. I guess not. But despite the fact that I'm going really fast in the video. Um, the video is sped up. I was being slow and really careful not to get sloppy and get it, you know, anywhere else on the other than what I wanted paint on. So I was actually working really slow with it, but I sped the video up so that you didn't have to watch me paint it in slow mo. I thought I cut part of that out, but I didn't. So here's where I'm taking, um, this is just some plastic greenery from Dollar Tree. And, <coughs> pardon me, and I'm adding it on here just as an accent around the, around those um, laurels on the, or the greenery or whatever they're called <laughs> on the sign, just to add a little bit of dimension um, and character to it. I have y'all. I have so many, in, you know, ideas for some intricate, uh, more intricate uh, crafts and whatnot. But every time I get an idea that pops in my head, I'm I, I have to go hunt for what I need out of my stash, and I can't find it. So I, I can't wait to get it organized so that it's easier when I have an idea pop into my head. I'm not spending half a day digging through the shed trying to figure out what bin what I'm looking for is in. But anyway, <clears throat> I've got those on there and then um, I took and just made a, a twine bow, wrapped it several times around my fingers, pinched it in the middle and tied it and put it in the, the middle of the greenery there.
these you know these projects I'm doing today are are, are fairly simple ones um, if you've seen any of my videos in the past there, there are times that I like to actually take pieces of wood uh, craft sticks you know Jenga blocks all of that and actually create something you know more entailed um, crafting so I'm looking forward to getting back to doing some of that as well but for now we're keeping it simple today I had a, a stray there that I needed to cut off and I burned all the, the fuzzies off of it and then just put the bow right there in the middle and it helps cover up where I glued the stems on and that's it for this one I think it turned out pretty cute so on to DIY number three this one's short and and, and simple I took these four round wooden discs some Mod Podge some white Waverly chalk paint and that napkin I painted the discs white and then went over it with Mod Podge and here I'm cutting the napkin to size to fit each of the four discs and I'm going to use the iron method with these um, I did that off camera you just take um, you let that Mod Podge dry completely place your napkin um, where you want it use some parchment paper and an iron and you can and it reactivates that Mod Podge so that your um, your napkin adheres with no wrinkles and because these are coasters um, I took and put a top coat over the Mod Podge I don't know if y'all saw my video from Friday I had done that same method um, on something else and I had used I had used regular paper it was not a napkin when I did the mason jar and it bubbled like crazy when I added the um, the Mod Podge as a top coat it did not do that on these so I think the problem was that I had a thicker paper on that um, on that particular project so it it didn't sink into the Mod Podge like a napkin does because a napkin so much thinner that when you activate that Mod Podge underneath it kind of sinks in there and becomes one with it and I think that's what the difference was so but I took and um, just put a couple coats of the Mod Podge on the top and that's it I was contemplating doing twine around around the, the edge of it I still might I don't know but I haven't at this point and I forgot to show me putting I've got um, I've got these little uh, protector things that I also put on the bottom of these and I forgot to show that but here's the final reveal of all three I hope you enjoyed um, the projects today please don't forget to like subscribe comment and share and don't forget to go to the playlist and watch all the other creators and I've also got each of the hosts links in the description box as well please go show them some love and thanks so much for watching have a great day